Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today I wanted to talk to you about a question I got from a viewer. So Jacob wrote to me and asked, could you do a video on why higher ABV often equates to more complex flavors and whether that statement is even true? Now I like this question for a couple reasons. Number one is anybody who asks a question like that is willing to change their mind. They're, they have an open mind, it's a great way to phrase a question. Awesome job Jacob, thank you. Second part of that question, more important question is, made me start to think and give me a little bit of a whiskey existential crisis if I'm just a proof <laughs> junkie, let's say junkie, um, if I'm a proof junkie or if I actually think higher ABV tastes better. So then I started thinking, okay, what do I want to know before I can make any sort of evaluation of this point and answer this question? For me, as with this channel and kind of the core point of this channel, I dug into the history. Why does higher ABV whiskeys even exist? And the answer is kind of easy, right? So the first people to do it were Glenn Farkless. Glenn Farkless released the 105 back in 1968, and it did fine. You know, it did totally fine. But that is, just to put this in perspective, the Glenn Farkless 105 was about our equivalent of 60% ABV. But then we've got another 20 years or so before any other real history is recorded about this whole thing. And one of my favorite people in the whiskey industry was the person to do this. Booker No. So, those of you that have been longtime fans of the channel know that I love Booker's. I'm a little bit at odds with them at the moment about the prices, but that is what it is. Booker No didn't like that everybody else was making a ton of money off of vodka, rum, and tequila, and he was having to proof down his stuff in order to survive and keep the you know distillery running. Things had to proof down a little bit because you got to kind of squeeze every penny out of the whiskey, right? Makes sense. He didn't like that. His daily sipper was 100 proof old tub bottled in bond. So he said, you know what? I'm going to make this new whiskey. I'm going to call it Booker's. I'm going to pick some of the best barrels, make it high proof, and I'm just going to give it to my family. Well, his family really liked it. And that was great because it ended up on shelves and it was selling for $40. At the time, $40 was very expensive for a bourbon. So people were buying it because it was a niche item. Oh, it's an expensive bourbon. That must be very good. Oh, it's high proof too. This is amazing. Well, it worked, you know, and it ended up kind of starting a, a whole new trend. Knob Creek picked up on it a couple of years later in 1992, and the rest is kind of history. A lot of other people do cast strength bourbons and, you know, some scotches, not a whole lot, but still, cast strength is now a thing. So there's the history, but that doesn't answer the question of is higher ABV better? Well, the answer is obviously going to be subjective, but I'm going to do my best anyway. So beside the history, I had to do some other kind of research, and that research involved these bottles here. Now, what I decided to do for my experiment was to find anything on my shelves. I didn't want to go buy any bottles for this in particular. I mean, I did, but I didn't end up, I did want to, but I did not do it. Um, I found anything I had that had both an equivalent non-cast strength and cast strength. For example, you've got the Red Breast 12 and the Red Breast 12 cast strength, right? It's the exact same whiskey, just higher proof. Obviously, you can't dial things into the batch unless you got really lucky, but you can only get so, so much. I thought this was a pretty good experiment, and as I was drinking these over the last few nights, it was unanimous that every single time the higher ABV was the whiskey I enjoyed more. So that seems pretty good evidence that higher ABV is something at least I enjoy more. However, doesn't really help with that crisis I mentioned earlier where I was just worried that, hey, you know what, maybe I just really like higher ABV. Well, it really just comes down to common sense. If you water down a whiskey, you are reducing the PPM, parts per million, of anything that's giving it flavor. Oils, tannins, congeners, esters, anything else that's giving it flavor are going to be reduced. Thus, the flavor is going to be harder to detect and you know, just in general enjoy. It's going to be watered down for lack of a better term. So that kind of does it for the answer. Higher ABV, in my opinion, is better if you like high proof whiskeys because there's more flavor. It hasn't been watered down. There's the side effect that you get to kind of play with your own whiskey and make the proof whatever you want by adding water, which is a fun little experiment. But that was kind of out of the bounds of what I was trying to evaluate here. So anyway, Jacob, I hope that answers your question. 
I'm with you. I like higher ABV whiskeys. I think a lot of us do. But all in all, it just comes down to water. So thank you all for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary, and I hope you have a great rest of your night. Cheers.